All right, hello everyone. Hope you're all well. Uh, I've just made it back to Australia, so I thought it would be fitting to do a video on TRT and its options and applications in Australia. So let's just get into it. Uh, as I've said on this channel many times before, I am not a doctor, and if I was, I wouldn't be your doctor, or maybe it would be, but I'm a health coach with independent qualifications and extensive independent research, so no treatment in this video is designed or recommended to treat any specific medical condition. I really want to specify with this one that I am not giving you medical advice on if you should go on TRT or what option you should get. If I say in this video that a certain option is not recommended and you're using it and it's working for you, it doesn't mean that you should march into your doctor and ask to change a treatment option. If what, you're, if what you're, you are doing is working for you, keep doing that. But this is more for people who are starting treatment or who are trying to get access to a better treatment because their current treatment is not working well for them. Only two topics in this, but topic A is about 90% of this video. And that is the types of testosterone that are available in Australia, both in terms of the actual testosterone itself, and then also gaining access to that treatment. Uh, I'm briefly going to touch on blood testing at the end, because that is a highly relevant topic, because this can be another barrier to entry. So just to preface this, uh, the state of TRT in Australia is not good. Uh, that's being very polite. Uh, the state of TRT in Australia is dog shit. Uh, testosterone is very, very harshly scheduled in Australia and the access to treatment is limited. So you're about to see, uh, what I mean. So to start with in Australia, we have something called the PBS, which is the pharmaceutical benefits scheme. And this is available through endocrinologists and urologists. Other specialists can gain access for it for TRT, but this is mainly what we're looking at in this scenario. And what this is, is basically a government subsidized program where you're able to receive your treatment for virtually free. Uh, it gets subsidized down to a handful of dollars, but there are a lot of caveats that come with that. So we're going to get into the diagnostic part in a sec, but what I've done is I've taken some screenshots from the PBS criteria for testosterone prescribing position statement. This is what gets given to doctors. This is what gets given to specialists. This is available freely online. So we're going to get into this because this shit's pretty fucked up. So here we go. What about men who are about to start testosterone treatment for the first time? This is a lot of guys who are in this position in Australia right now. So if the patient is starting treatment for the first time, then the GP, the general practitioner, the family doctor will need to identify the indication for treatment and the name and the appointment time of a recognized specialist when gaining approval for prescribing testosterone with the PBS subsidy. Makes sense. We recommend that the patient should see the specialist before treatment is started. Treatment can be started before the specialist appointment, but if the specialist disagrees with the need for treatment or there is not adequate documentation, then PBS subsidized treatment cannot be continued. So what this means is like, let's say if you go to your doctor and you've got testosterone levels in the absolute gutter and you're suffering, the doctor wants to refer you to an endo, but let's say your appointment can only be done in you know six months time your GP, you know, your kind-hearted doctor who empathizes with you may go, okay, I'm going to put you on a conservative treatment, let's say, you know, 5% topical cream, something like that, just to get you through until you can see a specialist. So in this scenario, what the specialist could do is you could rock up for your appointment and they could look at your blood work. They could look at the fact that you don't really uh, tickle their pickle for meeting whatever criteria they require, which we're going to get to later is actually not defined. And they have every right to stop your treatment, and then your GP cannot continue that treatment. So be aware of that. It gets worse. So this may require stopping the testosterone treatment in order to allow for a full reevaluation. So what they can do, and what I will say is this happen this happens very, very often, is that you'll come in, you might already be on TRT, and the endo is going to go, okay, I want you to stop treatment without a PCT, nothing. I want you to stop cold turkey so that I can really make sure that your testosterone levels are low enough to start treatment. This happens all the time. Now, as we go forth, uh, note the patient must see the specialist. For example, it is not enough for the GP to ring the specialist on behalf of the patient. So your GP can't ring ahead and go, hey, this is my patient. These are his levels. Is it good to get a go ahead for him to start on the PBS? No, not good enough. 
It is possible for the doctor to prescribe testosterone treatment without the PBS subsidy, in which case the patient will have to pay the full cost of treatment. This is called a private script. This is the light at the end of the tunnel. We're going to talk about that at the end. So we're going to continue down the shit show that is the Australian PBS. So what about men who are already on testosterone treatment? What happens for them to receive continued PBS support? So this is for guys who are already under treatment under the PBS. You might have been on TRT for six months, a year, five years, 10 years, whatever. And maybe you're changing your doctor. Maybe you, you, you want to get a different opinion. Maybe your doctor retires. Maybe you move states, all this kind of stuff. So all very legitimate reasons to seek out a new practitioner. So in consultation with their GP, men will need to be reviewed by an authorized specialist for adult men. This can be an endocrinologist, urologist, or a member of the Australasian chapter of sexual health medicine. Previous test results, if available, can be used for this review. If specialist opinion confirms established test testicular disease or pituitary failure, also known as primary or secondary hypogonadism, then treatment will be endorsed and continued PBS subsidy improved. Great. For those men, usually aged over 40, in whom the available documentation does not meet the new PBS criteria, so whatever it could change to over time, such as serum testosterone levels above 6 nanomol per liter, for those in the States watching, basically the reference range in Australia used to be 10 to 30. It got adjusted down to about 8 to 25. So we're talking below the bottom of the reference range. So you could be a seven or an eight, which is still below range. Then options include the withdrawal of testosterone treatment to see if the very low serum testosterone levels return. So straight off the bat, you can tell that whoever wrote this does not know shit about TRT. Because if you've been on treatment for five years, 10 years, 15 years, and you abruptly withdraw treatment without a PCT, not only are you going to go through hell, but you're sure as shit going to return low levels. And the suppression that you're going to have from long-term TRT use doesn't really indicate your pre-TRT need for treatment in the first place. So it is an unnecessary process where the patient is unnecessarily going to suffer at the hands of their doctor. So also, you could come back with a testosterone level of 6.5, 7, 7.5, 8, whatever, still very, very low, extremely hypogonadal. But because you don't fall below this extremely low cutoff, you will no longer qualify. And if low testosterone levels are confirmed, the patient would qualify for treatment under the PBS criteria. So if you don't meet that parameter when the doctor withdraws you, then you will not qualify to have your treatment resumed and you will not be able to restart your TRT under PBS through any endocrinologist in Australia or through your GP. It gets worse. No, there is no grandfather clause. If a man previously had two serum testosterone levels below eight nanomol per liter, which is like the bottom of the extremely low reference range, but both were above six nanomol per liter, he does not qualify as low. Similarly, some men have been on testosterone for years and their original serum testosterone levels may no longer be available. Happens all the time. You change practices. Your doctor's no longer able to provide you with old levels. Maybe they weren't even stored digitally. To continue to be eligible for PBS subsidized treatment, these men will need to have their testosterone treatment withdrawn for a sufficient time to allow for the valid reassessment of their baseline function. Ridiculous. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Gets worse. Such a withdrawal may lead to the reappearance of symptoms, but would not be expected to have serious consequences. So whoever wrote this can go and fuck themselves because that is bullshit. Why might a doctor prescribe testosterone levels? Uh, sorry, why might a doctor prescribe testosterone when levels fall outside of the PBS criteria? In consultation with a specialist, sometimes testosterone treatment is recommended when levels do not fall within the PBS criteria, but remain within the broader scope of some clinical guidelines. We're going to circle back to this. What this is essentially saying is that symptoms. In these circumstances, the patient would not be eligible for PBS subsidy but this is okay because you can still get a private script. As mentioned, there are many controversies on the safety and efficacy of testosterone treatment in older men, and these are recognized in clinical practice guidelines. Of recent concern is the possible risk of cardiovascular events in older men receiving testosterone treatment, particularly older men with underlying cardiovascular disease. Patients should thoroughly discuss the risk of, with the specialist who is aware of their overall health. No citation there. Uh, that has been debunked many times on this channel. I'm not going to get into that. So 
If that wasn't bad enough, these are your treatment options through the PBS. So basically we have a selection of shit, but to go through them, we have testosterone at 2% in a pump pack. This is like testo gel. Uh, topical testosterone 1% in a sachet. Testosterone 1% in a pump pack. Again, this is just three different types of testo gel. You've got testosterone 5%, which is an Andro Forte cream. This is probably the best of the topical shit options under the PBS, but they're all bad. And then finally, you've got a 5 milligram per 24-hour testosterone patch. Probably great for women. Uh, dog shit options. Then you've got testosterone undecanoate. You can get yourself some andriol testo caps, usually prescribed at one to two capsules per day, which will often bring you up to maybe the bottom of the reference range if you are lucky. And you've got testosterone undecanoate, which is the most popular option, uh, also known as nabido, reandron, uh, very popular in the UK. This is not inherently a bad product, but it needs to be split up and injected every week. I'd be very curious to see how someone would go on a weekly injection of Reandron, but it's not approved in Australia to self-administer. So this is usually prescribed every 10 to 12, maybe 16 weeks if you're unlucky. I've seen it every eight weeks, but even every eight, you're getting an average of just over 100 milligrams of test a week, but you're not getting an even distribution over those eight weeks. So not only can you have your treatment withdrawn at any time at the doctor's will, but your treatments are all going to be subpar. So my advice is, unless you are absolutely financially strapped and cannot afford 15 to 20 bucks a week for your TRT treatment, this is not even worth bothering with. Now, unfortunately, a lot of doctors in Australia tell their patients, and this happens all the time, that you can only get TRT under the PBS. This is incorrect. So testosterone can be prescribed privately in Australia. So any Australian GP has the ability to prescribe a private script for testosterone replacement therapy if the patient presents with low testosterone symptoms, irrespective of where the patient's levels lie on the reference range. So as I said before, when we referenced that, uh, you know, they can have clinical symptoms outside of low levels. This is what that is referring to. But the question is not, uh, uh, sorry, the question is, will they, not can they? And this is not the worst thing in the world because if a GP does not know how to prescribe testosterone, they should not be your TRT provider. So a lot of patients want to pressure their family doctor into prescribing them TRT. It's a bad idea because he doesn't know how to use the treatment. He doesn't know how to dose it properly. He doesn't know how to monitor properly. He doesn't know how to advise you properly. And you can end up potentially doing more harm than good going down this route. So while every doctor can technically prescribe TRT in Australia, you want to find one that knows what they're talking about, not just one who will give you a script. So most practitioners in Australia who are willing to do this, as well as the clinics that we have available, generally when they're looking at levels on paper, they want to see a total testosterone level below 15, this is nanomol per liter, or a free testosterone level below 400, one of the two. And it's not a hard wall cutoff for this, but when they are looking for something on paper, this is generally around the ballpark of the numbers they're looking for. And this point's really important. So in 2016, the reference range for total testosterone in Australia was 10.4 to 30.1 nanomole per liter, while the free testosterone reference range was 300 to 800. Now, in 2022, the total reference range can be as low as 5 to 25 and free as low as 150 to 600, and it swings depending on the lab. So let's say if you've you know, maybe watched some videos on the channel, or maybe you've read a book on TRT, or you know, you've watched some videos from someone on YouTube talking about TRT, you're having negative symptoms, and you go to your doctor and you say, I, I want to get a test for my total and free testosterone to see where I'm at. And your doctor goes, yes, yeah, sick, no dramas, let's do it. And your results come back and your free testosterone is 300. You and your doctor are going to look at that and go, well, that's basically smack bang in the middle of the reference range. So obviously testosterone is not the issue. But if you'd done that back in 2016, that same result would have literally been the bottom end of the range. And it would have painted a very different picture to someone who wasn't informed about what these numbers actually do and don't mean. So it is very important to get educated on the fact that these reference ranges have moved 
drastically in a very, very short space of time. And where you sit on the reference range in terms of you know what quartile you are in doesn't really mean shit. So when it comes to getting a private testosterone prescription, you actually have a lot of options in Australia. And you also have the options of everything on the PBS, but you generally want to avoid all of those because they're shit. So this is primarily what we're looking at for private testosterone prescriptions in Australia. So these are the big four. Really, it's the big three because we don't really use sustenone very often. I'm going to talk about that in a sec. So number one is Bayer Primotestin. Uh, a lot of people talk about being in Australia, being on Primo, and people think they're using Primobolin. No, it's Primotestin. It is the trade name for testosterone and nanthate, 250 milligram per mil in castor oil. So this is very much in alignment with what is being used to treat, you know, a lot of patients in, in the UK as well as the United States. Um, it comes in three one mil pre-filled syringes. Now, this is the downfall of this treatment option. The pre-filled syringes are a bit of a pain in the ass. I'm going to talk about that in a sec. But the upside of this and the reason why this is so popular is the affordability. So this is the cheapest treatment option off PBS to get a decent amount of testosterone. So we're looking at 30 to 40 bucks a box for three mils of this testosterone. Uh, and it is the most popular option for private prescriptions due to this, as well as the widespread availability. It is stocked at most pharmacies. Prescribing guidelines are one injection of 250 milligram per mil every two to three weeks. We on this channel know that that is not going to work. It needs to be administered at least twice a week, in my opinion. Um, but it is typically initiated at every two to three weeks. And then when you don't respond properly, the injection frequency is increased, usually to every 10 days. And then if, if your practitioner will give you a higher dose, the highest I've seen is every seven days. So the good news is that self-administration options are available with this. Some doctors will push you towards coming in and getting an injection in the office. This is not required. You do not need to do this and you can push back on that. So the good news is if your doctor prescribes you, you know, one mil every two weeks, you can just split that up into quarters and do two injections a week and you are still following your prescription. You're not doing anything wrong. This means you're getting the same dose over two weeks, but you're getting it much more evenly spread out. So the final thing I'll add with primatestin is two things. One is that you do really need to transfer it into sterile vials. Uh, primatestin will come with a giant harpoon needle to go on the tip. Do not use that to do anything with because if you inject with it, it's going to hurt like a bitch. Uh, but if you trans, if you use that to transfer into a vial, the hole is going to be so big, you're basically going to hole punch the top of the vial uh, and it's going to leak and you're going to compromise the sterility of the product. So you want to get some smaller needle tips to transfer into a sterile vial and then you can draw out with insulin syringes and inject, you know, however often you're going to inject. Some people will backfill into insulin syringes. I don't recommend doing this. Many people do that. Um, and the final thing I'll add is it does not work well for subcutaneous injections in most people. Most people with primatestin will end up getting bumps and lumps that are quite painful. The testosterone doesn't absorb properly. If you do make it to eight weeks and get your blood work done, usually levels drop by about 30 to 40%, and the patient generally doesn't feel very good. This is an intramuscular product only. Sustenon 250. Uh, similar in terms of it comes in three one mil products, but now we're dealing with glass ampules, which are even more annoying because you need to buy a separate syringe to draw and transfer this into your vials. Uh, it is a blend of two short acting esters and two long acting esters ranging from propionate to decanoate. Uh, it's 250 milligram per mil as well. It comes in peanut oil, but it's more than double the price. So it is the least popular injectable option. There is no advantage to using Sustanon over Primatestin that would warrant double the price. Even if they were the same price, I would still pick Primatestin because it's more stable. Um, there was a point where Australia went out of stock of Primatestin and we all had to switch to Sustanon and cop the price. It is interchangeable to a degree, uh, but it is not an ideal product because it's not worth 80 to 90 bucks for three mil. Again, prescribing guidelines, one injection every two to three weeks. I've seen it initiated at once every four weeks because of the idea of the decanoate ester. Probably one of the worst protocols you can get is a mill of sustenon every month. Um, and again, as they increase the dose, they'll increase the frequency. You can inject at home. You can transfer into a vial. You can split up your dose. Uh, it's not an awful option. Uh, sustenon in the UK is very, very cheap. Many of my clients in the UK use sustenon. Do daily injections. Works great. But... That's because it, you know, it costs a handful of, of dollars compared to uh, 
their other options, which would be uh, CPNA and enanthate. So again, doesn't really work well subcutaneously. This is due to the peanut oil. And a lot of people do get post-injection pain, PIP from Sustanon. Whether this is due to the ester or the peanut oil or both, we don't really know. Compounded testosterone injections, this is my preference. Uh, this can be compounded in different strengths and different carrier oils. Most commonly, either 200 milligram per mil enanthate or 250 milligram per mil cypionate, or you can have 200 cypionate or 250 enanthate. This is just what we typically see. I tend to go with the 250 milligram per mil cypionate. Uh, it comes in a 10 mil vial, uh, and prices range from different compounding pharmacies, depending on where you go. I've seen it as low as 120 bucks a vial. I've seen it go all the way up to 300. But keep in mind that you're most likely going to get this from a clinic, and the clinic is going to add a markup to this product, uh, and this is how they run their business model. So most clinics in Australia charge about 250 for these, including the markup. So it is my preferred option for my clients. Uh, 10 mil vial means it's going to last you three times longer than, or more than three times longer than three boxes of primatestin. It's the same product uh, and you can draw it straight out of the vial with an insulin syringe. But the downside is it is a bit more expensive, but clinics do not have access to uh, charging the cheap prices for primatestin. So this is the best option. Um, interestingly, you can actually have sustenon compounded and it ends up being more affordable. Why you want to do that, I'm not sure, but you can. Uh, so as I said, you don't have to transfer into vials or backfill. It's more convenient, but very few GPs will work with compounded injectables. I don't know why this is. So it's mostly available from clinics. Now, by default, you will get this in castor oil or cottonseed oil. These tend to be the oils that these uh, pharmacies default to. But sesame and grapeseed oil are available if you request them at certain pharmacies. And this will work better if you do want to do subcutaneous injections. We can also do compounded cream uh, in Australia, similar to what gets used in the United States. Uh, we can do the liposomal and atrevus base. We can add different compounds in. I like to add in a bit of vitamin D. It doesn't usually cost the, the client any extra. We can do it in any percent. You could have it at 7%. You could have it at 11%. But typically, we see 5, 10, and 20. There are some clinics who will peddle cream uh, by default with DHEA in it already. That is a red flag. You do not want to use DHEA if you do not need it. And these clinics often charge an enormous markup on these creams. The creams cost about the same price as the vials of testosterone, sometimes a bit less. So if you're paying through the teeth, if you're paying any more than 250 bucks for a 100 mil pump pack, uh, you're getting ripped off. So the downside of cream and the reason why I don't use cream very much with my clients and this sounds arbitrary, but it is due to the dispenser that it comes in. So we don't get the toppy clicks that you guys get in the States. Uh, so we're not able to dose it in the 0.25 intervals. We can only dose it in 0.5 intervals. But it comes in like a pump pack, like a soap pump pack. And the problem is that over time, just like with soap, air will get into the pump mechanism and the dose that comes out will not be accurate over time. This is problematic, but especially when you're dealing with a very strong 20% cream, um, as you're not going to get an accurate dose, uh, you know, in the second half of your of your product's life. And we do not have the, any kind of other dispensers available for this. So this is why I mainly don't use cream. Um, cost is about the same. As I said, um, pump packs are not ideal because we cannot adjust uh, in smaller intervals. So it's a very big dose adjustment between you know, 0.5 of mil versus one mil once or twice daily. So a lot of the time, if we do have to fine tune, we have to change the percentage. Uh, and GPs are often more open to prescribing compounded creams than compounded injectables. But typically, they will default to an Andro Forte 5% cream. Uh, and I will also note that unless you specify, you will not get a liposomal or a treatise base that needs to be requested specifically. So finally, we're going to touch on blood testing. Uh, GPs in Australia can perform blood tests for you for free through Medicare, uh, which gets subsidized by the Australian government. Um, GPs can run this for you for specific indicated reasons, so they have to justify why. Uh, you can get two comprehensive annual health checkups per year, which you can check everything. And then you can also get additional checks done if you're having certain symptoms or if you're monitoring stuff and so forth. However, many doctors will not uh, perform these tests for you for multiple reasons. Um, and even if they do do it, they often will do an incomplete panel. Very often I see total testosterone only. I don't see SHBG uh, or free testosterone. Even if your doctor orders you a full comprehensive thyroid paddle and your TSH comes back within range, 
Medicare will not even check T3, T4, even if requested by the doctor. So bulk billing doctors can be useful to get a blood test from, uh, but most opt for private blood work where you pay out of pocket if you don't have an, a relationship uh, with a good GP already. So I use a website called iMedical. Um, I've got five panels here I'd like to show you guys that I use for my clients. These are the, the, the kind of three that I use the least often. So when someone wants to check their thyroid, uh, thyroid function test or thyroid function test three, depending on if we want to check antibodies. And if we're just doing a testosterone check, you know, between uh, dose adjustments and I just want to look at the T level, I go for hormone two because you get te uh, total and free checked. Uh, before Danny has an aneurysm, they check E2 by default uh, and SHBG and prolactin are also included uh, automatically. These are the two panels I use 90% of the time. So if someone wants to get a comprehensive check done, they're looking to start TRT, or we want to do a check, you know, after six months or a year, I like to get sports BB4 plus done. It basically checks everything that I want to look at. The only thing that's not on there that I will sometimes add is progesterone, uh, depending on where it's fallen before and if I've looked at it previously. Otherwise, if I just want to look at hormones, um, I'll, look, I'll get hormone plus thyroid. This gives me all the hormones in the body. Uh, this can be a nice snapshot to seeing how someone's going on HRT, uh, you know, depending on where they're at in their journey. So I hope you guys found that helpful. If you would like to work with me or connect with me further, uh, you can find me at www.advancedfundamentalhealth.com. Thank you for listening.